So we are currently on our way to Houston to my sister's house for Christmas. We've got to head to Lowe's because I have to do some last minute Christmas shopping. All right, you guys, I think we'll go check out the plants first. I'm gonna stick my finger down in there and see if I can't figure, yep, plastic cages. Totally plastic cages in there. So everybody is awake from their naps now and we are going to be making a Buckeyes. <laughs> I don't feel my lack of math skills need to be in this video. <laughs> An hour, 30 minutes or an hour in the fridge just so that chocolate can harden. So unfortunately we didn't get to try a Buckeye tonight, but we will definitely be having one first thing tomorrow morning because we will be heading back over to my sister's house bright and early for Christmas day to start opening presents. And then we're gonna be making Christmas dinner and we are going to be filling in my mom's plant with the cuttings that I brought tomorrow as well. Hey guys, so everybody is getting ready to head over to my sister's house and we're gonna bring my mom's plant. This is the Marble Queen Pothos that I had originally given her the single cutting and you can see how long it's gotten, but we are not a very full pot because we were only ever one cutting, one vine. So we are sometime today, probably over at my sister's house, going to be adding in the cuttings that I brought up here, but I have a slight concern about this pot. So my mom did repot the original plant I gave to her into this pot a while back when it had gotten root bound in its four inch pot, which is totally fine. It's totally what you're supposed to do. But I am questioning if this pot has a drainage hole or not. My mom thinks it does. My sister babysat this plant a while back. She doesn't think it does have one. The base doesn't come off of this. It does look like there is like a separate base to the pot if you can see that, but I, it doesn't come off and I don't see much space in there to suggest that water is actually draining out of this. And we are having some slight yellowing to the leaves up here, which is making me concerned. So we're gonna slip it out of its pot real quick and figure out if this pot actually has drainage holes or not. Okay, there is a drainage hole. There is one drainage hole in the very middle of the pot, but it's kind of interesting as I'm not sure how the water, like you could drain the water out because there's such a small space here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try just running some water into this pot and see if it actually runs through the bottom and if it actually will dump out. If it does, then we're fine. We'll just put the plant back in here and proceed forward, but let's see what happens. So you guys, it is draining, but the problem is because that drainage hole is only in the middle, when you go to like tilt a pot like we normally do to drain water out, all the water runs to this side. So basically she's just, after she waters the plant, she's gonna have to leave it upright, tilt it to get it out of the base, leave it upright, tilt it to get out of the base until all of the water has actually drained out from the plant. But good news is we can use this pot. All right, so I'm just gonna get the plant back in here. And then like I said, in a little bit, we will catch back up and we will add the cuttings in with this plant. Product of the Buckeyes. Mm. So freaking good. Hammer in the evening, all over this land. 
<laughs> Alright you guys, well we're done opening Christmas presents so we're gonna try and get these cuttings added into my mom's pot here since we do just have the one vine like I said and we do have I think five cuttings we're going to put in here hopefully if we can fit them all we'll figure it out and basically we're just going to be digging a small hole down equal spacing around the edge of the pot away from where this vine is like hanging over. And we don't wanna to go too close to the edge of the pot because we don't want the roots to just be like stuck in there right on the edge. So I'm gonna to try to go in at least a half an inch. And because I took this out of its pot this morning, the soil is pretty loose. So I think we're just gonna be able to like kind of dig a hole with our fingers, but we do have handy dandy metal chopstick if we need to in order to make holes to get them in there. And this is a six inch pot. So we wanna get them as far down in there as we can but it's not necessarily we get all the way to the bottom. I would say at least halfway is kind of what we're aiming for so that as this dries out, these don't, roots on these don't get too dry for too long before she has to water it again, and then they die, if you know what I mean. So we're just gonna start working in here. Mom, you wanna, here, I'll take these and I will pick them out, and then I can start on one side and you can start on one side and say hi to the people, Mom. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> So I kind of like just started a hole over here, but so we can kind of just dig a hole. I'm gonna use this. Now what I, in a, maybe, hold on, let me see. Now I am trying to feel for roots, you guys. I did notice there weren't, wasn't a ton of like root growth in here since she repotted it, which is good, because then we're not gonna be breaking through a bunch of roots trying to dig a hole to stick these in. But if I do feel like a big root's in the way, I might just try to dig further to the other side. But let me see, that is pretty, deep and I was able to just do that with my finger. So mom, I think I'll just dig these around with my finger okay. and then I can hand them off to you to add in there. And look at this, you guys, this one already got a brand new leaf just being in water. It is already just, while it was rooting water, popped out a new leaf. That is how quickly these plants it root. Is. So yeah, just stick it. Well, here's the other thing. We gotta look, so the new leaf's gonna grow off here. So if we want it to trail over the pot, we wanna make sure that this leaf is pointing that way. Okay. Can do that and then just put it in there yeah gently get it I like that's as far as it will there. go as far down as it will go without causing a problem see. you see what you think I think it's as far down as it'll go you can get the node part a little bit but I think that's good because I don't want to bury this whole leaf so then my mommy is gonna kind of push the dirt in gently that. push the dirt in around that little guy and just lightly tap it down we don't want to pack it in like Okay. Too, too tight. There. Looks good, good to me. Okay. okay. Let's rotate slightly. Mm -hmm. that one. My hole is not really in the... Well, I guess like we can... Let's just, since we already have a hole here, we'll put it in here. Okay. And then we can do a hole in between those two because we got to get five. Will that work? One. We can do another one over here. One, two, two three, four, five. Okay. So where my hole is is good, you're saying? Yeah. Yes, I think so. Okay. Because you're talking about putting another one here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And you guys, if you did have like really compacted dirt, which this is definitely not compacted dirt, you could just actually remove the dirt to get it out of the way. But, and also because it's slightly damp, I'm able to kind of push the dirt to the sides and it doesn't just fall back in. But if you are having problems with it falling back in, you could just kind of maybe mist the soil a little bit to get it to stay out of your way. Or you could just use a tiny shovel or something to actually shovel some of it out. So let's see who we've got we want to put here next. And almost all of these, you guys, like I said, are starting to get new leaves already. This one's kind of at a very awkward angle. Let's not do this one yet, because that one, I feel like it's going to be a little bit trickier. Let's try this one. And then once again, so this is the new leaf, so we want that sticking out. This one? Yeah, okay. out towards the outer edge. Okay. And try to get the root straight Oop, down. The root was not in there. Hi. Well. You want to do it? You got it? To. No, I was just guiding it for you. Teamwork mm -hmm. makes the dream work. That's true. Looks good to me. Okay. Uh, you uh, pick up his vine. So. Okay, which way? Rotate that away. There you go. Good. Okay. Is that good? Uh huh. Okay. And then we'll dig a hole here. I feel like I should dig the holes too because you have long nails and you're going to end up with so much dirt underneath your nails. This is true. This is why I don't keep my nails long, you guys. I'm in dirt way too often to deal with that nonsense. I don't want to have to be cleaning it out from under my fingernails constantly. Okay, there is a little bit more roots I'm hitting here, but they're moving out of the way pretty easily without me snapping them. So I think we can still get one in here. 
Just let that okay. stay there. Let's see what. Hopefully, I have one that doesn't have an awkward new leaf growth. Oh, that one's really awkward. Look at that. Mm -hmm. We're doing that one last. Okay. This one's pretty straight up, but make sure you got it facing outwards since all the new leaves will grow that so direction. Facing this way? Well, no, all the new vine growth will oh, go okay. that way, same way. Okay. Wait a minute. Let me get the other leaves out of the way so you can see what you're doing. Okay. I would spin it that way, smidge sure. it. If it's making this one go yeah, kind of weird. Work. Okay. Right, then we just need to do this. Okay. Okay, so then, since we're at this direction, let's spin this way. This Thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll dig a hole over here, so we have two left, right? So, okay. Yeah, we got plenty of room on both sides there. I think. Yeah, we will. Have you, have you mentioned that I have a black thumb? You do not have a black thumb. She does not have a black thumb. She has a shamrock that is still alive that she's had for how long? How 40 years, something crazy? Close, close to 40 years, if not 40 yeah, years. Yeah, so I don't think that's a black thumb. Comment down below and let me know what you think. But I think if you can keep up any plant alive for 40 years, you don't have a black thumb. Don't listen to her. <laughs> okay, these are a little bit more awkward just because the growth is kind of shooting out that way. So we're going to try and get the root in there and then angle it just a little bit so that... It'll okay, fit. So Does that make sense? Yes. So let me put it there, push it down in there if I can get it going down. If it has to swirl a little to get in there, it's fine. Okay. I'm getting it there. It's really a long route. Yeah, let me see if we can get it to swirl a little oh, bit. Oh, I wasn't getting it swirling very well. Well, it might not want to swirl because, you know, as you point out, it's really long. We may need chopstick action for this one. Let me try one of the other, see if the other one's root is a little bit shorter first. We'll hold the okay. chopstick. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get these. Mm. This one's got two roots and that growth is really weird, but let's see. Okay. Okay, we're just gonna have to bury this growth point, I think. I'm gonna try to angle it a little bit, but... You're, yeah, otherwise you're not gonna get the root. It, yeah, it'll find its way. It'll push its way back up out of the soil. Nature will find a way. Okay, I think we're, that'll work. Tamp it down just a little bit. You might want to top off the soil a bit when you get back home. Yeah. I do have to soil. I do have soil. I know. I, I did not. About, I did not bring it with me. I thought about asking you to bring, it, and then I was like, Meh. we shouldn't. We should be able to still use all the soil that's in here to fill back in. So, okay, one more to add. You want to grab the long vine to rotate. Got it. Where are we rotating to? I think we're going to put it on that side. Are we looking even? I think we're looking right there to put it you right know, there. I feel like somehow this would cut a little bit far that direction. But that's okay. Oh, you're also moving around a lot, silly thing. I may not like the drip back. <laughs> it'll be fine. <laughs> try not to knock any of the new ones, like well, the leaves and stuff, because they'll probably try. They'll try to pop out a little bit, but yeah, we're good. Next time you water them, they'll kind of solidify mm -hmm. them in there. And the soil is wet. I don't know if I said this yet, but the soil is pretty damp. So we're not going to worry about watering this right away after doing this. If your soil was really dry, then yes, I would water right away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Last hole. Mm -hmm. Right there. Looks good. Trying to say, yeah. Oh, there's so. a giant root right there. Well, so I think I would go a little to my left, then maybe. I think. You're closer to this one? I think so. Try. I don't know where that root is. Might, Might go a long way. Mm -hmm. Well, no, let's fail. Let's just put it wherever it can go where that root's not bothering it. Because we need a pretty deep hole for those roots on this one, are pretty long. This is gonna have to be a little bit close to the edge, you guys, just because there is a big root from the main plant that is in the way. Do we need this? I don't think so, but let's see. Here we go, trying again. That'll work, because the roots just kind of like swirled, if you can't see, it's just kind of swirled in there. It's not gonna snap, and the growth point is still like high enough that it'll be able to push out. Now, ideally I wouldn't want this this close to the edge, but like I said, we don't want to have to cut through a big, nice, beautiful root for the main plant that was already in here. So we're just gonna, gonna push around, tamp it down lightly. I really do kind of wish we had some more soil, but you push some of that from the middle over. I think so, yeah, you do that. And then you want to tamp that down slightly on it. Mm -hmm. So, even though the leaves, the current leaves may look like, like this one's leaning this way and this one's leaning this way, so it doesn't look quite as full, 
the new growth points are like right here, right here, and right here. So that's really going to help this. I hope you guys can envision it. <laughs> really going to help this to fill out so that she's going to have a much nicer, fuller plant without having to propagate her one incredibly long vine yet. Yes. But, you know, at least that vine is looking good. So now she's going to have a much fuller plant. And I will say that if you guys do this, adding this many cuttings into a six inch pot, how long it would be before she needed to repot this with just that one vine in it versus how long it would be before she's going to need to repot this with this many vines in it. We just made that time frame a lot shorter. So probably maybe at the end of like summer, I'm guessing is when okay. this might get a little bit more root bound again, but we can mm -hmm. always check it at that time. But Merry Christmas, you have a fuller plant. Thank you, honey. <laughs> I love it. It's great. <laughs> All right, you guys, we'll catch back up with you in a bit. All right, you guys. So one of the things I'm most excited about that I got for Christmas is a gimbal because this is going to help to stabilize my camera against my trimmers that cause me to shake and make it really hard for me to film things while walking around and holding the camera. So I am trying to get this set up and the camera put on there so we can test out how well it works. But whoever did these instructions, which have microscopic print, I mean, the camera won't even focus on it. It's so microscopic. Whoever did this and whoever did the associated diagrams, I don't think they actually communicated with each other because they don't make sense. But I'm gonna see what I can do to make this happen. Well, you guys, unfortunately, that was a complete and total bust. It said online that it was compatible with most mirrorless cameras. I had actually seen it come up as being compatible with my camera in some blogs. Turns out it's not not compatible, not even remotely. So it is being returned and a replacement has been ordered. So stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, it's time to start making dinner and I am going to be making my vegan cornbread that everybody requests I make at every single holiday. It is delicious. It is the best cornbread I've ever had. I have not always been vegan, so I have had regular cornbread before, but yeah, it's really good you guys. So I'm gonna show you guys how I make that. All right, you guys, I've been told it's time for me to start making cornbread. So I went ahead and pre-measured everything out because I didn't, I'm always feel like I'm running behind when we do this. But if you guys want to know how to make this, basically you're going to need a, I think this is a four, no, two quart casserole dish of sort. Just greased it up. I've just taken some vegetable shortening and like smeared it around in there. A bowl for mixing, a spoon for mixing. You're going to need to preheat your oven to 425. Then you're gonna need a cup of all-purpose flour, a cup of cornmeal, this yellow cornmeal, but really you could probably use white cornmeal as well. Uh, let's see, a quarter cup of sugar, four teaspoons of baking powder, and then I've also got a quarter teaspoon of salt in here. This is a quarter cup of canola oil. We've got a quarter cup of soy milk or other milk alternative, six, no, sorry, two tablespoons of flaxseed. And this is actually gonna act as an egg replacement. And I do already have six teaspoon. Let me try this again, you guys. First of all, I said tablespoon, right? Two tablespoons of flaxseed. I've got six tablespoons, which is also, I think, three eighths of a cup of water in a pot on the stove. And what we're gonna do first is we're actually gonna combine the flaxseed to that, bring that to a boil, stirring it constantly until that gets to a thicker consistency, see kind of like that of an egg. And then we're gonna take that off and then we'll start mixing everything else up. So let's just go over to the stove first. All right, you guys, so we're waiting for the water to come to a boil. It's not gonna take that long with that little amount of water. So as you can see, we're already getting there. So I'm gonna add this black seed in there. And then once you've added it in and you stir it in, you're actually gonna reduce the heat to medium low. Just take it down to a simmer. And then you're just stirring constantly until this gets thick. Then we're just going to set it aside while I mix up the dry ingredients. All right, guys. So as you can see, it's now gotten thicker. So this is what's going to serve as our egg substitute. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off and head back over to where we have our other ingredients. Okay, so we're gonna just mix all those dry ingredients together once again. One cup of all-purpose flour, one cup of our cornmeal, 
I swear this is not going to turn into a cooking channel, you guys. I just thought it might be something fun to cover during this Planty Xmas vlog that obviously I couldn't totally fill with all the plants. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this. Comment down below and let me know one way or another. Then we've got our quarter cup of sugar, four teaspoons of baking powder, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. And then we're just going to mix that together first, get those dry ingredients mixed in really well. And then we're just going to start adding in the rest of our ingredients, get them all mixed up. We're going to pour them into our pre-greased two quart casserole dish over here. Hopefully the oven will be up to 425 by the time we're doing that. And then we're just going to pop it in the oven. So this is mixed well, the dry is mixed well. We're going to put in a quarter cup of canola oil. And then we're going to throw in the cup of our soy milk or other alternative milk. And then I'm going to grab the flaxseed from behind me. And this is definitely a bit gooey. It's a little bit hard to get out sometimes and off of the spoon. You may have to use your fingers or another spoon as a little bit of help to kind of get it off. Actually, it came off pretty quickly that time. Sometimes it just really wants to stick. Okay, I spoke too soon. It's pretty sticky. And actually, I might be able to use this spoon to help get it off. Yeah, there we go. All right. Let's mix all of this up. And then when sh once you get it into the oven, let me double check my notes about how long you typically have to leave it in there before I tell you wrong. That's what I thought. 20 to 25 minutes, but you're basically looking for it to get like a little bit golden brown on the top and keep an eye on the bottom of it and make sure it doesn't start to get overly brown. You don't want like a super crispy, almost burnt brown bottom, unless you kind of like that kind of thing, in which case you do you. All right, I think that's good, you guys. So I'm just gonna turn it out into this dish, like I said. And I probably should have gotten like a spatula. I feel like it would have been easier to get it out of here, but we're gonna do our best. All right, you guys, once you get it in there, just kind of smooth it out a bit. And then we're gonna pop this in the oven and I'll catch back up with you in about 20 to 25 minutes, my time, literally a second, your time. All right, you guys, so while that cornbread is cooking, just a quick note, because as I was talking about the Christmas presents earlier and from what you saw in the opening montage of Christmas presents, you might've noticed there was nothing planty that I received for Christmas, but do not worry because Ergoid Asia, a plant nursery in Indonesia, reached out to me a little while back and wanted to send me some free plants. And they were going to arrive this week, perfect little planty Christmas gift. However, because of the crazy, like record low temperatures that were gonna be happening around the time the plants are gonna be arriving, I did reach out to them and said, um, maybe you should hold off on sending those. I do not wanna to have to open a box of fruit frozen dead plants on camera because of course I'm going to film the opening of that box when it arrives for you guys. So they are supposed to be sending them out at the end of this week. So by the Friday after Christmas, I did check and where I live, we will be above freezing, decent amount above freezing both during the day and at night. So they're going to make sure they arrive sometime during that following week. And once again, as soon as I get them, I will film an unboxing video and we will check out what I got. So stay tuned for that. But I think our cornbread is just about to be done. So it has been a very eventful Christmas. I hope you guys have had a great Christmas as well. I think we're going to go watch the movie Spirited. Hopefully, fingers crossed, because I really have been kind of wanting to check that one out. Hopefully it will be good. And then we're going to head back to my parents' house. Well, my parents and I are going to head back to my parents' house. But we'll be back over here bright and early tomorrow morning because everybody always demands my homemade biscuits for breakfast the day after a holiday. So I'll catch back up with you then.
All right, you guys, so it has been a relatively chill day here. Pretty much a lot of naps were taken by pretty much everybody except for myself. And so during that time, I went ahead and started getting a jump start on editing this video for you guys. Cause I mean, if everybody was gonna be asleep, why not? We did go for a walk as you saw earlier. That was nice. It finally was actually warmer outside during the day than it has been. Cause it, like I said before, it's just been like record low temperatures even this far south in Houston. So I'm not sure what else is on the docket for today. We're gonna to be having some dinner here shortly and I might just, you know, spend the rest of the evening just kind of hanging out and catching up with my family. But if anything super interesting happens, I'll be sure to loop you guys in on it. Otherwise, I will talk to you tomorrow. So right now I'm just working on wrapping up some editing for this video and then I'm gonna be packing everything up and we're gonna be heading back to Dallas. And as soon as we get there, we are gonna check in and see how everything is going with all of my plants. I did check in with my friend who's looking after them and Toby yesterday. Toby has been all over her, just loving on her because I'm sure he is like, where is my mom? When is she coming back? So super excited to see him. She said she's been doing pretty well with the plants. It sounds like everybody's doing good, but once again, we're gonna check in with everybody as soon as we get back. Too, buddy. All right, you guys, so I just got back home and we are gonna go around, we're gonna check on the plants. I did make a cheat sheet that is in my office before I left when I was making the cheat sheet for my friend who was taking care of my plants. I made my cheat sheet for the day I got back of the plants that are probably needing to be watered as soon as I get back. And so we're gonna check those second. And the reason we're gonna check those second is because I actually came back later than I thought I was going to. And so I didn't leave my instructions for that long for my friend. So I suspect there are some propagations that probably desperately need to be watered. So we're gonna check the propagation cart and the Ikea cabinet where I have a bunch of the propagations first. And then we're gonna move on to those plants on that list I made just kind of as a critical check first list. All right, you guys, so as I suspected, we do have some wilters here, but once again, that is mostly my fault because I came back later than anticipated almost a full day later. So let's definitely take any of our little hibiscus here that look like this and get them watered down. And good news is these bounce back relatively quickly. All right, you guys, did you see we have some more hibiscus situations going on here, another droopy one here. I knew this was gonna happen, like I said. So we're just gonna get all of these taken care of real quick first. And so the only other ones I'm worried about in the cabinet are the little alocasia corn babies. So we've got my little baby bambino ones here. So tiny, but they're getting more and more leaves by the day. And they are definitely just, I can feel them. I don't know if y'all can like, that's pretty light. So we definitely need to water those. We got three more up here. Let's see. Yeah, these all need to be watered. So. Let's get these watered down and then I think that will be all of the propagations. We'll move on to the regular plants. All right, you guys, everybody in the kitchen above the sink is looking pretty good. I did just miss my air plants there since I missed them. Last time I missed them was right before I left. This did get watered while I was gone. All of the water propagations are looking fine. Everything else up here that's in soil looks pretty good, but most of these got water while I was gone, but I do have the black velvet alocasia on my list to check. So let's see if this guy needs to be watered. Oh, definitely, I can tell just by picking it up that it needs to be watered. That is definitely a dry focus camera, dry soil in there. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna set everybody that needs to be watered on the island in the kitchen here, and then we will water them after we kind of go around and collect some peoples. 
We pulled this guy out and there was a slight issue with the heat, you guys, after we moved those plants upstairs, like it stopped working. So just in case that happened while I was gone, I went ahead and pulled everybody that we moved upstairs back downstairs. So my friend who's staying here didn't have to deal with trying to like move everybody back down. But this guy definitely is looking a bit dry. So we're gonna water him. All right, you guys, someone's definitely looking a droopy. This is not a happy Baltic blue, but that's why it was on my list of critical to check as soon as I got home. So we're gonna go ahead and bring this guy into the kitchen to water him down. Ooh, look at that. We may need to slip this guy out of his pot sometime soon and see if perhaps he's in need of some repotting, but right now, water. Okay, so the Calathea ornata was also on my list to check. And let's see, oh yeah, we definitely need water. We look fine, but that soil is definitely dry to the point where we're gonna start to get fussy if I don't give her some water. Okay, so the Hoya Weyeriae was on my list as well, and that definitely is looking pretty dry in there. So we're gonna water this guy. Okay, so the Cebu Blue was on my list to check as well, and we are definitely looking pretty dry in there, and we've got a yellow leaf starting. We don't look super floppy though, but we're definitely going to go ahead and give this guy a water down. Okay, so Ruby is the last plant we need to check on in the living room and she is definitely looking bone dry. So we're gonna water her. I do have an interesting thing going on here, you guys, that I was gonna address in a separate video when I had like gone a little bit more through the journey of figuring this out. But do you see that yellow bit in there? She's got some of that happening in several places in the pot. And I think this is the start of some kind of like mushroom growth. I did water her the last time I watered her with a hydrogen peroxide water mix to try to kill off what was happening in there. And it looks like it worked in some places, but obviously not there. So I'm not gonna water her with hydrogen peroxide again today because I just don't like to do it like back to back too often because it's really more like just use it as medicine for your plants. So we're just gonna water her today, but I'll keep an eye on that and I will be sure to let you guys know what happens with that weird situation. Oh dear, you guys, not good. Not good, not good, not good, not good, not good, not good. We are not happy. That is not a happy plant, that is a droopy plant. Let's definitely get this guy watered. I am glad that I didn't leave him upstairs though where it got freezing cold or the situation might have been worse. So we're gonna get him rehydrated and then we are gonna put him back upstairs now that I am sure that the temperature is maintaining up there and the heat is working. Okay, I do not like to let my Hoya Carnosa Compactus get like this, you guys. I don't know if you can see that they're starting to get shriveled. I don't like to do that, so I'm kind of disappointed that this one needed to be watered sooner, but we're definitely gonna water it right now. I know a lot of people say to let them get shriveled. In my experience, that does not lend itself well to keeping a plant healthy, so typically not what I do. The soil is mostly dry, but if you can see, those roots are really fine. I don't like letting fine rooted plants dry out to the point of shrivel. It's just so risky when the roots are so tiny like that, but we're definitely gonna get this one watered down. Okay, so our big rattlesnake Calathea here is the last one on our critical to checklist. So let me see. Oh yeah, we feel pretty dry in there. Oh, we're definitely light, but we look good. We don't look bad, but oh, there's like maybe a spot starting there. So definitely gonna be watering this down. All right, you guys, so I've gathered up everybody who needs to be watered, and as you might have noticed, I did water some of the ones that really needed it critically right away versus just waiting until I had everyone gathered up. But now I'm gonna go ahead and get everyone else watered down. Okay, so I've got everybody watered down and I did just go walk through the entire house and just kind of look at all the other plants that weren't on that critical list. And honestly, everybody looks pretty good. I didn't see anybody who looked like they were underwatered. I didn't see any signs of like overwatering. So all in all, I think we fared okay. The biggest one I'm concerned about right now is that Joseph's coat. 
but fingers crossed it makes a full recovery. If so, then I'm pretty sure we won't be losing any plants from this little trip that I've taken out of town. Now, one other important thing that I highly recommend doing when you get back from being out of town is thoroughly checking your plants for pests. So I did, while I was watering the plants that I just watered, check all of them for pests. Everybody looked fine. I am probably gonna wait till tomorrow morning to check everybody else in the house for pests just because it is starting to get a little bit late in the day and the lighting is starting to get not ideal for me being able to check for pests. But I definitely wanna do it tomorrow morning just to make sure that nothing's popped up while I was gone. I don't want anything sitting there festering if it did. But all in all, I am feeling pretty good about things and I had a fun holiday trip and I hope you guys enjoyed coming along with me and getting to meet my family and see some of the fun holiday things we do and then also joining me for all the fun planty things we did as well. If so, please be sure to click that like and or subscribe button down below and I will be seeing you again in the new year 2023. But in the meantime, aloha!